Well, joining us now is Geoffrey Miller from the Democracy Projects, uh, Victoria University Democracy Project. Uh, of course, Geoffrey is an international analyst, very well known to Today FM listeners. Uh, Geoffrey, welcome. Lot to talk about here. So China, Xi Jinping's firm hold on leadership. We've already talked about this a bit uh, this morning. But what does this mean for New Zealand? Good morning, Josie. Well, I think all, a lot of this has been locked in for a long time, but until it actually happened, until Xi got the third term, you know, it, it was still, you know, there was still a question mark. But now it really is locked in. For New Zealand, I think it provides some predictability. You know, we might not like what China is doing, but it does provide a measure of predictability. And you know, New Zealand has done quite well so far in walking this tightrope between being a Western democracy and having China as its biggest trading partner. And most of the time, we've managed to pull that off. Jacinda Ardern has been very adept over the last five years. You know, as China has become more authoritarian under Xi, at, at walking this tightrope, we we came close this year to, uh, I think, going very very. Uh, pro-Western, and I think we are, have become closer uh, to that US, you know, UK, EU position, uh, particularly with Ukraine. And uh, Jacinda Ardern went over to uh, the White House uh, back in May, and there was quite a hawkish joint statement between New Zealand and, and the US. And, and China gave New Zealand a bit of a tongue lashing over that, and Jacinda Ardern then pulled back and talked up the independent foreign policy and, and these kinds of things. So we've, you know, we've, we've sort of zigged and zagged a bit this year. And I think New Zealand will just have to continue to do that because, you know, with $20 billion of New Zealand exports going to China every year, there isn't really a plan B. And all of these things, these free trade agreements with the EU, for example, or the UK, they're just not a substitute uh, for, for what China has to offer New Zealand exporters. Our biggest trade partner for sure. And you, you're absolutely right. I mean, I think the figure I looked at, 2008, we exported about $2.5 billion worth of goods to China and now $20 billion. I mean, that's extraordinary growth for us. But will the pressure come on even more, though, Jeffrey, given that uh, Xi Jinping looks like he's going to be more autocratic, potentially more uh, coming down on opposition, on, on, on let alone Uyghur uh, communities and Muslims uh, in the camps, but also potentially more sabre-rattling around Taiwan. It becomes harder for us to tread this... Um, you know, walk the fence, if you like, and thread the needle through this really complex thing of protecting our trade partner, but also having something to say about the moral issues of human rights and global politics. It's going to become harder, isn't it? It is going to become harder. Uh, you know, I think we're going to see moments that keep coming up. Uh, you know, we saw Nancy Pelosi visiting uh, Taiwan earlier this year. That was one of these moments. You know, Russia invading Ukraine, that also put New Zealand in a difficult position. And that's when um, we introduced autonomous sanctions for the first time against Russia. But then that becomes a, a precedent uh, potentially that c- could impact our relations with China in the future. It's going to get harder and harder. Um, so you know, there isn't, there are no simple answers here. Um, the, the trade position is just so clear, and as you said, you know the exports to China have just skyrocketed. So, you know, 20 billion. You know, our exports to the EU are only five billion by comparison. Uh, so it's four times. Uh, they're not even close. And the free trade deal that the EU gave us still you know, ex- will exclude a lot of New Zealand's main agricultural products. There's still going to be tariffs on our dairy products, and they're going to be. You know, this is a minimal quota for beef. So, you know, China is really the only any option that New Zealand has for you know the vast bulk of what we export at the at the current point, despite, mm. despite all the talk of diversification that the government uh, likes to to make. So uh, it's it's going to be really hard, particularly for New Zealand. But just just very quickly, because we we need to go to a break, uh, Jeffrey. But I, I want to get your views very quickly on what you think is going to happen over winter in Ukraine. Like what what is this counteroffensive going to continue? Do you think? Yeah, well, it's it's really, really interesting at the moment. Ukraine has made some big gains on the battlefield, and it looks like they'll probably take the uh, take house on the uh, quite a strategic. Which is amazing. Yeah, there and yeah, down there in the south of Ukraine. At the same time, you know, they've lost thirty percent of their power plants in the last week because Russia's been flying these uh, Iranian kamikaze drones into them. And you know, Russia's been fighting this war asymmetrically because they've been doing poorly on the battlefield. And and that does even things up somewhat and it is going to get colder. 
um, over over winter, and that does favour the Russians as well because of you know, the frozen ground. That means Russian tanks find it easier to uh, go on that. Mm. And then, remember, they invaded uh, Ukraine in the winter for that reason. So, you know, I think things are more finely balanced than we might might think. Yeah, definitely. I think good good analysis there, Jeffrey. Thank you for your expert um, thoughts on that. Jeffrey Miller from the Democracy Project is an international analyst, of course, and a regular on Today FM. Thanks for joining us.